Hi everyone, I'm glad you're back with me for another daily devotional. So this is gonna be my last devotional in the Genesis series. And our section of scripture today is 33 verses of another genealogy that descends from Noah. Now I did a Devo a couple weeks back on how we can look at a genealogy and actually find so much treasure in something that initially seems you know, kind of boring. So instead of doing another Devo that's really similar to that, I want this week, or I want to use this week to pick up on where we left off from last week. And we were talking about vessels. You know, the fact that there are some vessels that are used for honorable use and some that are used for dishonorable use. And Noah, although imperfect, was still an honorable vessel that was set apart as holy. And because of that, he was useful to his master. But his usefulness, according to 2 Timothy 2, was because of his holiness. And this is really what I want us to focus on today. You know, and so whether we look at Colossians 1, 1 Thessalonians 4, Ephesians 4, yeah, all throughout his letters, Paul is exhorting and beseeching us to walk and live in a manner that's pleasing to God. You know, and this is our great task and the goal of sanctification. In the end, you and I please God in everything. Everything that we think, everything that we say, everything that we do, every aspect of our life is to be brought into the submission of His will. And if that's the case, then we have to understand we're, we need to excel in that. You know, we can never see our faith in such a way that we think we've arrived or we can coast. We are to continue to excel, to want to do more, to want to be better, to strive to be more like Jesus. And this truth should never create in your heart or mind the idea that you don't measure up. Why? Because you're not striving to enter God's love, but you're striving in the midst of God's love. It's a love that you already possess because of the perfect person and work of Jesus Christ. Because in Christ, that everlasting covenant has been made where God promises He will not turn away from doing good to you, but He will put the fear of Him in your heart to ensure you will never turn from Him. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. So. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Now that's Philippians 2, and it really describes the dynamic of spiritual life and sanctification. God has done a transforming work in you, and yet there's a role you play in how you respond to that work. Now a reminder of what that verse doesn't mean. Work out your salvation doesn't mean work for your salvation. It means to make manifest on the outside the salvation that God has done on the inside. Salvation means there has been a complete and radical transformation in someone by the power of God. Now the responsibility that the believer has is to let the inward work that God has done become an outward display to the world. And you do this with fear and trembling. Why? Because it's not easy. It's hard work. It is hard to live a holy life. It is hard to live a godly life. It's hard to overcome the remaining flesh every single day. But we remember that God is watching us as our Father, which means we live this out with a sense of awe and a sense of trembling, knowing that He disciplines those whom He loves when they are disobedient. And we, we remember that we've been given power by the Holy Spirit's regenerating work in our hearts and minds to obey the very commands He has given us. You know, we should never say that we don't have the power, strength, or ability to live a holy life if indeed the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And not only that, but our Lord prays for the personal holiness of all those who are true believers. It is the holiness of God that demands the holiness of His people. You know, we learn from the vision of God in Isaiah chapter 6 that the chief attribute of God is holiness. We see in verse three, the seraphim are around the throne and they're crying, holy, holy, holy. Again, the chief attribute of God is holiness. The angels are not crying out love, 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 although God is love. They're not crying out mercy, 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 or grace, 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 though God is merciful and gracious. The angels are crying out that which most marks God, His holiness. And do we see why holiness is so important for us as His children to exemplify in our lives? The holy people of God are those vessels that are the ones that are honorable to be used for His glory. You know, and I can genuinely hope and say today as we end our time that that's you. 
that that is your heart, that is your desire, that although imperfect, right? This is never perfectionism, but although imperfect, you are walking in a manner worthy of God, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. That's Paul's prayer for the Colossians. And that's my prayer for you today as well. All right, guys, love you. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon.